It was great to spend the holiday season cruising with friends aboard our little sailboat Rosa. With all the folks on board, it was easy to relax, rest, and enjoy the sun. We returned to La Paz and met up with Tincho and Noelia. Their new boat, My Ten, had a lot of fishing gear on board that they wanted to organize and learn more about. You should find out if, uh, if braid isn't too expensive in this country. Because the reel is small, so you mm-hmm. don't have much space. You want to put a, a multifilamento. It's good for distance. It's not good if you have things twisting. It's very easy to get naughty. You have to be very no. careful. But you can put twice as much rope in it and it's twice the strength. You go chip, 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 and then boom. Rapid taxi, rapid taxi. Coming to their boat and start <laughs> taking it apart. You take a pause oh, so you can see. You have your your line here, like mm-hmm. uh, one of those, and then you have your your hoochie like maybe four or five meters behind. If you drop this in the water, it dives straight down. Mm-hmm. Uh, when you catch a fish, the fish hits the the back and it mm-hmm. pulls, and then the, this can be pulled up. It's a wrap around your fingers. You know what I mean? Like when you when you're catching fish, and you you get a you get a wrap. Ooh, like, no. uh, yeah, or like this when the line comes the other side of of the fish. You get that, and when that goes, ah, oh yeah, I know people are lost. your finger. Oh, yeah. Like this, this is the worst. And if you have gloves, you, they, they, they slide off. Depends how high your boat's off the water. Mm. I like to leave almost almost two meters between the, the forward swivel and, uh, and the, the lower. Put the, the, the squid through. Mm-hmm. Then you put your weight first, and you push the weight inside mm-hmm. with a little saliva. Yes. <laughs> yeah, like this. This is a spawning hook. It's, it's often it's flat mm-hmm. on the sides. They are they're flat, so they yeah. don't bend, and they're short and stubby. So this is a pretty good hook. Now we'll go with that one. Yeah, uh, triple hooks increase your chance of catching, mm-hmm. but they can be dangerous to use when you have the fish in the cockpit going ba 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 ba. If, if he is hooked only in one, these two hooks are on the outside. Yeah. So whenever the fish is moving, this can get hooked in a dinghy or... Yeah. But I use a triple hook because I find it, it uh, when they hit it, they hit it. Ah, oh, there it is. That's a perfect one. Ah, he's only got one. If I tie the knot, mm-hmm. this hook would stay here. You want the hook to be here. Mm. Okay. Right before the end. Right and so you have to okay. always find something to, to space. Mm-hmm. From here to here. Oh, that's what you use that. Maybe you're saying the pipe. Yeah, the, the pipe is best. Like, if you find the right pipe, you can make the knot, and the pipe actually slides over mm-hmm. the, hot, the the hook and the knot. So when they, when they bite, they, they go right over the pipe. They go plastic or copper pipe. I also use a pipe so you don't have to spend half an hour <laughs> yeah. putting the beads. putting the beads on, and then you know, you, you lose the line and you lose <laughs> ten beads. They're pretty <laughs> yeah. cheap. You can yeah. buy them in any kid's store, yeah. but then you're also losing all the plastic, you know, this is stuff in the water that yeah. fish to eat, twist, mm-hmm. uh, ten times, you twist it, or mm-hmm. seven or eight, whatever, and, and then you, you know, if you pull back first, it, it's easier afterwards, and then you put it back inside yeah. the top, mm-hmm. and you, I burn, yeah. I burn the ends a little bit, and then I, I mushroom it, you wait for it to get a little cool, and you, uh huh. And that, when if it slides, it just gets it stops. Believe it or not, but most of, I have caught a really big fish, and the, and the line slips, and just as it holds, just yeah. there, yeah, it's like wow. The pipe also helps to straighten up, make sure the hook stays nice and straight inside. Yeah. That. You can put a swivel here. Uh huh. I just uh, figure eight it. I make a, a, a loop, mm-hmm. and then you figure eight it. Mm-hmm. to catch a black marlin or yellowfin tuna or very large yellowfin tuna strap on 
C'est comme on se trappe un peu. Non, c'est pas. Non, c'est actually high up there. C'est Ricky Jake's a uh, a Japanese method of fishing fishing line that has multiple hooks. They usually have between, anywhere between four to six. Uh, hooks. It's either little pieces of feathers or little lures. They usually have a little glow in the dark so you can use them at night as well. They're connected to a heavier piece of line in the center with branches of a smaller line. Uh, they usually come up with a swivel and uh, clip on the top and they also have actually this is for the bottom. This one actually goes like that. I cut it the opposite way. And on the other side they have a swivel where you connect it to your fishing rod and these are meant you can connect them 10-15 of them in line I like to cut mine in half because I like two, only two at a time. Makes it a lot less complicated to catch fish. We got them off at night and uh, you get mackerel, anything that hangs around lights usually like, tends to like these. Uh, you can even use them in the daytime, they work perfectly well at day. They are mostly used for mackerel or small predatory fish at that shoal in, in large shoals. Here in the harbor, we these days I've been fishing with uh, mostly jigs, uh, small jigs uh, between 20-25 gram and uh, most of these come from Asia because uh, they're very expensive here in Mexico. Most jigs here actually come with a triple hook which I remove. Put a single hook on the side so it doesn't get stuck on the bottom. I've just been casting these or bottom jigging with them and we've been catching pompanos and trevallis with them. This has worked here as well. I've been using a little white hoochie as well. Just a very simple straight hook, uh, sinker and tiny little white hoochie. Uh, great for trevally and all sorts of little predatory fish. Love these are work really great if you like trolling behind your your dinghy with a couple of feet of transparent leader. I usually put a rapala. This is not the right color though. I don't use this color most of the time, but it does work. What about the red and white? Those are painted myself. I'm not gonna show those to you. The world famous rapala's magnum. They pretty much your standard if there is fish i get it the main defect is that you tend to lose them you will have them behind your boat and wham and they disappear and you 25 bucks a pop uh, they come in a variety of colors which i like i like the what we call the fam famous marlboro red which is a white body red head uh, imitation sardine which is a dark black blue white and red belly with spots they really like this one uh, the rapala will shake like a middle, they, they will generally shake like that and they, they, they make them, some of them even have a bead inside this one doesn't, no, this one the, the hooks rub against and they make a bit of crackling noise I try to put two lines on the boat uh, ideally I would, put, I would put four but uh, it's a lot of work and if the weather is not appropriate it's a lot to handle and, uh, I always try to have one skirt and uh, one wrap on each side and I will try and vary the colors as much as possible from each other I always, I always have a red and white one and then I, because it's been my lucky colors since, since I was very young, I've always had lots of luck with red and white. And then I varied the other ones with either green, yellow, rainbow. And these just go straight into water, they flow nice and smoothly in the water. This one is quite weighted and uh, these will stay 4-5 feet underwater. While some like these will actually pop to the surface once in a while and uh, the fish really like them. Uh, you have plugs, which these are salmon plugs. They do work here for, for tuna and amberjack. Uh, works better with a, with a weight if you weigh them down and or you have a downringer. I uh, haven't really had the chance to use much of them here because we're always going too fast for them. But if your boat speed is under three knots, they tend to work pretty well because they got a, kind of a realistic circular movement and they, and they sway from side to side. Spoons. Spoons work great in open ocean. They're great for. Uh, for Wahoo and Mahi Mahi. They used to work particularly well, but I find that for some reason they're getting less and less popular uh, around the world and they tend to twist the line quite a bit. If you do not have a solid, like a very nice solid hand line and the swivels don't work properly, they can really make a mess out of your line. They will go like this, or this. these ones kind of like go like this, this, they kind of like they twist and turn. They do like an eight figure eight on the water. They will twist back and forth. If I could have the ideal setup on this boat, I would have 
two hand lines, two rods on extension poles, so boat lines that I would have two long fishing poles that go on each side of the boat. We'd connect it to two fishing rods and then two uh, hand lines that are slightly shorter at the center, which and I would generally swim two rapalas and two hoochies at four different colors so you maximize your chance of fishing. In very fishy waters, especially if you have tuna and you're out in the open ocean, you do not want to have four lines up because trust me, you do not want to catch four fish at the same time on a sailing boat. <laughs> can make a mess out of your line. Your basic hand line comes, it's mostly composed of a, a normal spool where you put monofilament on it. Uh, I've seen people that put braid on, on a hand line. I highly do not recommend, never use braid if you have to touch the line by hand. You always use a, mo a, multifilament, a monofilament. Uh, I like using anywhere between 400 and 600 pounds. And it's not because of the baking strength, this is because of safety. The better grip you have on it and the less chance of it actually knotting and you losing a finger. And it makes less mess in the cockpit. Uh, at the end you have basically the biggest swivel and uh, clip you can find. This is a this is four or five hundred pound swivel and clip. And on this end you can attach anything you want. In this case we have we have about four or five feet of uh, nylon uh, leader connected to a normal rappeler which I tried to repaint <laughs> and hasn't really worked. Uh, I guess we haven't been sailing far enough into the open sea. And on this particular handline I have a preset length which I usually keep and there's a piece of, uh, this is just a piece of bungee that I use to absorb the shock of the fish. It's quite a bit of line mm -hmm. before you get to the bungee. Yep, and I keep this on longer than, than I do my, my rod. The bungee is basically just tied off as a, with a double, with a double hitch knot, which you can kind of reopen and, and reset as you want. It's either two or three boat lengths or like 30 yards, 30 to 40 yards behind the boat and then you have your swivel and then your leader and then you have your hook at the back Yeah. and this is the bungee cord so you tie the bungee, you let the line go and then the leftover line you kind of leave like a, leave it sagging Yeah. and then you tie, you tie off the line to the boat so when the bungee pulls uh, when it pulls the full length of the, bungee, of the yeah. bungee the line takes over because the bungee will never be as strong as the line so you, you, do, you do have to leave uh, a certain amount of uh, of slack on, on on the line, so when the bungee pulls, it uh, it basically absorbs the shock of the fish. I haven't really bought any fishing gear since I've come back from Asia because it's extremely expensive and all the gear is starting to get rusty and used and worn. We are coming to the end of our fishing gear, but it's still catching us dinner. We took part in the local swap meet and managed to offload some of the unused gear in our bilge. We had a pretty big shock. Tincho and Noelia, who we met a little while ago, and they invited us aboard and Robbie helped them a bit with the fishing gear. They had an extra dinghy. They had two dinghies that came with their new boat, one inflatable and one hard shell and they decided to give us their hard shell, little pram. <laughs> We're super stoked about having a little um, pram dinghy that can be converted into a little sailing dinghy and can take a, a little bit of a bigger outboard on it. So we're really happy about that. Thank you Tincho, thank you Noelia. Another great thing happened. Robbie went over to our boat neighbor and made a big upgrade in our life. He's got fishing rods and wind generators and spinnaker poles from my way and he's got 15 hot boats on the boat. It has so much stuff, it's like a floating apartment, it's great. Not bad, I'm gonna have to open it, do a carb clean, put some high octane fuel inside, do a fuel filters change, maybe I'll change the spark plug. Uh, yeah, the only issue with this is it seems like, uh, it's like, it seems like, it, like when I throttle it on max, it doesn't seem to reach its maximum revs, as if not enough fuel getting into it, but that's just, I think, some cloggage. Like cloggage from not being used. Yeah, it sounds like the mode hasn't been used, like, it's so light, yeah, we can just take it, it off. It takes, you just go like this and put it on the boat. It's extremely light. I'm gonna have to like, it might be like Tef gel D, so it, it become really smooth. You can just put one finger. And where are we gonna keep it? Huh? Uh, I think I'm gonna make a little thing at the back, I was thinking. So we sold a whole bunch of stuff at the swap meet today and swapped it out for this little engine. The dinghies came full circle as Scott and Lily took our old dinghy 
and sold their inflatable to Tincho and Noelia. Oh yeah, beach landing, baby! Beach landing! <laughs> <laughs> the birds were even showing off their fishing skills by the shore. Robbie immediately started taking advantage of his new trolling dinghy and motor in the nearby mangrove. <laughs> Curry powder, ha, <And> soy <laughs> sauce, sesame oil, uh, what else? Garlic powder, pepper, salt, onions, chili powder. That's it. Chili sauce. And we all enjoyed the fruits of his labor with some solar-cooked trevally. I'm not taking a photo. This is a video. <laughs> well, our guests on board had to return to the cold north, while my way, my ten, and Rosa moseyed on up to the nearby Caleta Lobos anchorage. Although very close to the heart of La Paz, the series of small bays heading up north out of the harbor are a great spot to escape the sights and sounds of the city. We met the locals at the fishing camp on shore, and we could hear the snapping of the blue mud crabs in the nearby mangrove lagoon. Robbie snagged a bucket full of mackerel, gutted them, and boiled them up until they became easy to peel off the bones. He then put us to work separating the bones from the meat. some chopped veggies, a little flour, an egg mixed well into a bowl, a little oil over heat, and we formed small patties with the mix to make fish fritters. It's a lot of work, but mm -hmm. it's really worth it. Catch the fish, <laughs> clean the fish, to boil the fish, you have to- Yeah, they'll be golden. Poor Ravi. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> 